Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamu alaikum I am grateful for the invitation extended to me as a guest speaker to present a topical paper a topical talk on this platform of al uh, al islah the topic that I have selected and phrased reads the suppression of freedom of intellectual thinking and expression in the name of a religion. To define some of the words that I have included in the phrase. I will take first the word suppression. Suppression by definition itself is oppressive in action and in effect. Nobody would want to be at the end, at the other end of the receiving end. Now freedom, if it were to be suppression of intellectual thinking, though it's bad, but it could be understood. But to say that the suppression of the very freedom of the, of the intellectual thinking is offensive, to the dignity of any thinking human being. In the case of religion, in the name of religion, in fact, there should be no religion that would ask for suppression, for suppression. But if a religion can be founded and designed to have such a suppression as part of religion. Now, the topic is complex. But I will try to have my presentation simplified the topic, as it happens, gives a glimpse of a bigger issue that haunts the mankind in the matter of spiritualism. In fact, when this issue goes by unrecognized, unknown, signifies the success of the design for suppression. Now, I shall give you my credentials, not for the talk, but for the subject in the talk. My credentials are no different from the credentials of all others because we commonly share the same obligation that is rested upon us, each of us individually, to acquaint one another with truth as it is in the Surah Al-Asr. That means we are obliged to acquaint one another, one another with pieces of truth as each comes to light. However, my compelling credential is 
that the obligation that I have is much heavier because of my advancing age now nearing 90 years. Truth, acquainting one another with truth is so important because truth normally is being ignored or suppressed or distorted. Truth is regarded as an orphan and ignored like an orphan is ignored. But falsehood has many fathers, each for different reasons. The Bible, it reminds me of one verse in the Bible. It is in John chapter 8, verse 32. It says, O ye men, seek truth, it shall set you free. Which means it shall set you free mentally. Now, in order to achieve the suppression, which is in the topic, which is the design, to achieve the the, 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 the the suppression, there is a mechanism put in motion and the mechanism is very much sophisticated. We as humans are bestowed by Allah. We are created by Allah in the nature of having certain instincts which are very useful for our existence in our life. Among these instincts, those which can be exploited for the purpose of suppression of this freedom of intellectual thinking, the first one is the instinct of survival. The second instinct is the instinct of fear. Now the instinct of survival goes hand in hand with the instinct of fear. When there is a danger, the instinct of survival triggers fear in the human being. Now that fear is the one which can haunt, which can uh, confuse, which can defeat a human being if he does, does not appease it, if he does not allay it or pacify it. Another instinct we talked about the instinct of survival, we talked about the instinct of fear, and the most important instinct is the instinct of spiritualism. Spiritualism. We human beings are created with that instinct of spiritualism. Ma khalaqtul jinna wal ins illa liya'budun. And this is not possible if we did not have that instinct of spiritualism. No human being can live, can exist without having this instinct fulfilled, satisfied to the extent that spiritually he feels calm, tranquil. Now when we come to this fear. The human being that fears most, it's a saying, there is a saying, a fear of unknown. We human beings fear what is unknown. And the most unknown 
is the most feared. And now what is the most unknown? The most unknown to all human beings, regardless of what his faith is. The unknown of what lay ahead after death. What is there after death. And then human beings mind run riot, imagination. Human being imagination run riot. They can imagine many, many terrible things that can befall them after death because of the ignorance. Now, to pacify this fear, to allay this fear, to extinguish this fear, human being needs to need a shelter. And the shelter is again the instinct of spiritualism. So what he does? He does, he goes to seek shelter in the form of a religion because that is consistent with his instinct of spiritualism. Now here, where, while in pursuit of, 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 of uh, tranquility of mind with regard to this fear of what is after death, a human being, we can become a prey of those who regard themselves as custodians of religion. Here, it is here now, the custodians of religions have a free hand to exploit our instinct of survival, our instinct of fear, and our instinct of spiritualism. And there are many of them in the market with their hands stretched to welcome the new converts and make them devout followers. Now here, the religions that are around have their own designs. They try to appease the believers by giving them the simplest way of belief which makes it easy to accept like just believe and get saved just believe and get saved and that is how it works but then as you know the false beliefs cannot be planted without first the suppression of the intellectual thinking and reasoning. And that is done systematically, methodically, with great sophistication. And what they do then is they know how to take advantage into disadvantage and take over the control of the mind of the followers without the followers knowing what is happening to the mind. And like it says that everything is fair in war. Everything is fair in love. And I may add now that everything is fair, is fair in religion. The custodians of religion will argue what's the objection to cheating, misinforming if at the end 
they end where they end after death with a good result. But then I must point out one thing which is very, very important. Where suppression of the intellectual thinking succeeds, it is not total, it is not in, in its entirety. The control of the mind is only in respect of spiritualism and that is where that instinct can be exploited. The, the control of the mind is not comprehensive. A person who has converted to a belief, however false, through loss of the control of his thinking, will continue to be intelligent and sharp in his intelligence in all other fears of his life. Even a rocket scientist, having so been duped by the custodian of religion, when it comes to his service, his delivery, it will be very sharp. There's no difference. Except that the difference in, in something where he does not even know that there is the difference. But there is another thing which I must point out, is the bias. Bias has no room in any religion, because bias is emotion. And emotion is not grounded on reason. But bias becomes very useful for for uh, trapping people into the false beliefs. Bias becomes a crutch for false beliefs. Bias is, the bias can work by having that bias directed against all other beliefs all other religion, so that the person who entertains bias in his mind has the sense that he is fulfilling his duty toward his religion by exercising bias against all other religions. And that is where the space for, for pluralism the space for interfaith tolerance becomes narrow or just absent. Even we, let us take my example. I as a Muslim, if I have a bias being a Muslim against other sects, against other religion, that signifies that my beliefs are not self-reasoned, not self-cultivated, not self-attained. That means that I myself have become a victim in the loss of the control of my own mind in the matter of beliefs. Even if those beliefs may be, may be true. Now, what I shall do is read out what Hazrat Ali has said 
about how mind is so important to be retained and to be careful about contemplation of anything you hear which must be appraised mentally. Imam Ali salam said, Mind is more wonderful. Mind is more wonderful than man himself. And a part of one of his sermon reads, All praise is Allah. All praise is Allah's who made Islam the source of understanding for the intelligent and the source of intellection for the contemplative. Najib Balaga, Sermon 106. Hazrat Amirul Mu'minin also cautioning Muslims said, make moral and righteous use of your mental capacities. He is wise who carefully meditates over what he hears and then accepts only truth. Najib Balaga, Sermon, Sermon 156. Now, here is where Islam stands unique in this respect. Islam, in contrast, requires the exercise of the intellectual thinking and reasoning to be worthy for the beliefs in Islam. Allah in the Quran condemns those who do not apply their intellect. There is also condemnation for blind following. In the Quran, I can quote verses in the Quran which condemned blind following. Allah compares those who do not apply their intellect with cattle and also with wildest of animals. See verses chapter 8, verse 22, chapter 25, verse 44, chapter 7, verse 179. There are more than 400 verses interspersed in the Quran which summon human thinking and reasoning and the wrathful reprimand in the Quran is Malakum Kaifatahakumun. Why you? How do you judge? Islam also warns of the blind following. See verse chapter 6, verse 114, chapter 7, verse 3. And the Quran warns those who surrendered mental control to others will rue, will repent in the day of judgment when they see the punishment is coming and will wish they had used their intelligence. See verse chapter 67 verse 10. Even in the verse 9, chapter 9 verse 31, Allah warns in the Quran by giving the examples of the rabbis, the monks and the rabbis in chapter 9 verse 31, who took over the control of the mind of the followers and made them obey the, the monks and the rabbis instead of obeying what the Lord said in the scriptures. Now this warning is relevant even to Muslims. 
because it is in the Quran. Now to conclude, I have a heavy duty to reveal what I see as truth and in order not to be caught for any possible misquotation I may do, I will try to read out. Now what is disturbing, now that I am concluding, which will take me rather less than two minutes, what is disturbing is that the systematic and methodological suppression of the freedom of intellectual thinking and reasoning and expression operates in our madrasa, in our own madrasa. I say this with my own experience, long experience as a part-time volunteering madrasa teacher. It starts with the children of young impressionable age and with great success. While Madrasa as an important institution serves as a springboard to raise a community who are Muslims by their own reasoning and conviction and control of the mind being intact. However, this, be, this can be another topic for another talk sometimes. Wa alaikum as -salam.